In this video, we'll look at setting up a dome sky for a scanline render. I'm going to begin by looking at the information I'm going to use as the map on my dome. And I'm inside Photoshop, and you see here a sky view. This was shot from the end of a pier so as to avoid any landforms that would uh, disrupt the sky information. You do notice uh, the distortion and cupping here uh, of the ocean, and that comes from splicing together several images. It's important to note that you need adequate pixel count to fill up the dome. Otherwise, when you go to map this information on the dome, you'll literally see the pixels in the sky. And so take into consideration exactly what the output size would be to gauge exactly how many pixels that you'll need in the background. I'm assuming that I that might have several um, picture frames worth of tracking capability up and down between the top of the dome and the ground. And so at a resolution of 640 by 480, uh, that would allow me to have you know at least four times 480 or close to 2,000 pixels from top to bottom. If we look at the image size, you'll notice that I have 8,000 pixels in width and 2,580 pixels in height. With that uh, piece of information intact, let's look at setting up the dome. Inside 3D Studio, I'm going to begin by building a sphere object. I'm going to go to the Sphere tool, and we're going to click and drag and produce a sphere that would represent uh, the universe about our scene. Now, we're going to get inside here, and assuming we have some sort of model, in our case, uh, the wall house sitting at the center, we don't need the lower half of this. We'll have a ground plane. The upper portion will represent the sky that wraps around our model. So if we look at the tools inside the sphere, you'll notice it says Hemisphere here. We want to go ahead and pull this up so that we're just below the ground plane. We don't want to come right at the line. We want to make sure that there's enough geometry that passes down below our ground plane so that we don't get any light leakage. Next thing we want to do is flip the normals on the sphere. Presently the normals are all pointing away from the center and since we're going to be inside we want to have this be inverted. And I'm going to pull down to where we find normal We'll select that, and uh, by default, it's set flip normals. So if we flip our normals, then anything that's mapped onto here will be interacting as if the primary light source is at the center. Next, I'm going to set up what would be the equivalent of a ground plane. So I'm going to go to the Create, Geometry, and Plane. We'll click and drag, and it uh, doesn't really matter in this case uh, what all is here, just enough to make sure that there's something beneath the hemisphere. And uh, next, we'll get, go ahead and get inside and we'll go to create cameras. I'll set up a target camera and I'm going to click and drag uh, somewhere near where I'm going to be standing towards the center of the space. When you place a camera it automatically gets placed right on the XY plane down here. So we want to get this camera up into space just slightly. Let's zoom in so that we can get a hold of it. Let's lift it up into space. I'll right click on the camera and select the camera target. So once we have the camera target, we could also manipulate that. Of course, there's nothing to look at at present. So to be able to set this up uh, so that it makes sense, let's go ahead and place something that might be analogous to the wall house. Let's say that's sufficient for right now. And then lastly, let's go into our perspective view here and click and pull down to cameras and get inside of that camera view. Um, as you notice, the angle of our camera is not sufficient to see much of the background. So we'll go into the Modify tab and adjust the field of view to something that's a little bit more wide angle. And uh, we might go ahead and select the camera target while we're here too and reposition that up so that um, we're looking at a little bit more sky and a little bit less ground plane. So there's nothing on the hemisphere at present. Um, all we see is green on everything. We could certainly in the short term change the color, the basic CAD colors on any of these items so that they're a little bit more legible um, or distinguishable from each other. And uh, since the dome is ultimately going to be sky, we'll give it a bit of a bluish color. Leave the wall house also um, as a kind of gray color for right now. We're also going to have to place lights. You should be mindful of any lights that are placed that they make sense with the background and the lighting and shading that might be on the clouds that are in the background. There's nothing more disturbing than to have a light source shining on your model 
that's uh, coming from the opposite direction that the light that's shining on the clouds or any other features that might be in the background map. So definitely take care to look out for this. I'll uh, place a couple of light sources out here. We'll select um, simple standard lights and drop them out here into the scene. I'll do this as an Omni and then once I have that one Omni we'll go ahead and lift it up into space and reposition a couple of copies of that around uh, what would be the uh, wall house. And I'll do these as an instance. Okay, so we have some illumination around the scene. Let's confirm what the, uh, the attributes are of the Omni lights. They're on. These won't be having uh, shadows on them. We'll make sure of that. We'll set something up um, as a primary light source that does cast shadows. And there'll be multiplier likely is going to need to be reduced on this. And we may even need to turn on decay. But before doing so, let's set up our primary light source. And that will be a target spot. And usually the angle between the target spot and the subject matter and the line of sight of the camera is going to be somewhere between uh, uh, 45 and 90 degrees. So let's uh, go ahead and lift this up into position and we can expand our hot spot so that uh, we don't see any edge uh, to this. Now an important part of setting up the primary light source since it's inside the dome is uh, we want to make sure that the light doesn't shine on the side of the dome and clearly make it look like a stage set. So we'll go to the exclude button here and click on it. We want to make sure that the sphere has been excluded from uh, the illumination and shadow casting that comes from the cone light here. Now uh, we may need to rely on these Omni lights uh, to wash that dome a little bit, but uh, there's another method to get this to brighten up and we'll take a look at that shortly. Okay, so next we'll look at lighting and shadows inside the viewport here with the hardware shading turned on and using the scene lights. And clearly the Omnis are um, very intense right now. We want to knock those back. So we'll come inside the Omni uh, modify tab and let's pull this way down so we can see our colors just a bit and of course uh, we want to be certain that the spotlight shadows are turned on they're turned on yes and they have ray trace shadows so let's all also confirm what sort of shadows we're getting here by coming down to our illuminate with shadows and we see the shadow being cast by the wall so let's assume that that's sufficient for this particular study. And finally, let's uh, go ahead and set up the map that's going to be on the dome. I'm going to go to Modify with the dome selected. And we'll pull down to where it says UVW Map. And we're going to, now we have a map placed on here. We're going to set up a map type that is cylindrical. Uh, even though this is a spherical geometry, the map that I produced is a uh, it's a series of uh, rectangles that have been stitched together and they really are derived from some sort of cylindrical image collection. So um, it works best with cylindrical map in this case. Now we don't have any information mapped on here yet but clearly once we place the map uh, this is a scan line. We don't want to have real world map size. This is something that's going to be used with mental ray. You should see the orange outline here of the UVW map that's been placed on the hemisphere and let's now finally develop the map that will be placed on the hemisphere. I'm going to go to my material editor. We are going to go retrieve the map that we were just looking at in Photoshop. I'm going to set up a standard material type and you'll see all of these options in here uh, in yellow that go with mental ray. I have yet to readjust my renderer so that we get a scan line but we'll take care of that at the end and I'll now come down to where I find the diffuse color swatch and the none button immediately adjacent to that. We'll click on this and we'll trace out a path to a bitmap inside my materials dome sky. Okay, dome sky and when it shows up inside the material editor uh, is also a set to real world uh, scale by default and we want to take this checkbox off and set the value on tiling to 1 and 1 for right now. We'll go back to parent 
and then uh, we'll go ahead and place the map and make some additional adjustments after it's been placed. So the dome is still selected. We'll go ahead and click and assign material to selection. And uh, one last thing here, it's not showing up in the viewport because we need to turn on show standard map and viewport. And here we go, now we can see our sky map applied to the dome beyond. Now it may well be that the seam in this map needs to be rotated out of the camera. Right now, uh, I'm not certain because we haven't rendered this, we will go back to the diffuse map and we'll look at the offset inside the tiling. And you'll notice if I scrub the value in here, there's the seam right there, uh, we can rotate the map until that seam has been pushed out of the picture plane. And my angle on my camera is a bit wide right now. I'm seeing all the way up to the apex of the dome where we get the convergence in the pattern and clearly there's some distortion. So we'll make some adjustments to our camera as well. So the map is on the dome. Uh, some additional things that will need to be done to the map to make it more vibrant and sky-like include filling some of the other channels inside this material. Let's go back up to parent. And now we're at the top of um, the stack that goes with this particular material and I'm going to roll down to where I find all of the other maps that are available inside this material and I'm going to simply reuse the diffuse color in my specular level and in my self illumination and I think that will be adequate uh, for right now so what you can do is make adjustments to the intensity and brightness of this map and make it be um, a little bit more vibrant by using the self-illumination channel and we can also make adjustments to the specular level so the highlights are going to be a little bit more sparkly so take advantage of using these two additional channels as a way to make the sky a little bit more vibrant and to give it a little bit more depth